What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. I got a special guest on tonight. Uh, really excited, of course, a rookie that we're all really pumped up about as Giants fans is our six-round pick this year out of Old Dominion, Trey Hawkins. He's been blowing it up uh, at training camp. He's been getting rave reviews to the point where the Giants have started to play at Dory Jackson in the slot at times. Um, and it looks like the kid may actually get an opportunity to play early on, uh, which is crazy for a six-round pick, but he's been doing a really good job. So I thought, who better to have on than his defensive backs coach? Uh, well, he played at Old Dominion. Leon Wright coached there for three years as a DB's coach. Before that, he was an analyst at LSU, and he played – at Daniel Jones's alma mater at Duke, so you know you're getting a really smart guy, really good, really good college academically and athletically. But uh, Leon, man, I, first off, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out to uh, to come on the channel and talk about Trey. I appreciate you for having me. Man. Anytime I get to talk about a young man like that, uh, it's all my pleasure. Yeah. So tell me about Trey. I had a, a lot of my subscribers write up a couple of questions that they wanted me to ask you. But just tell me about Trey, the player. Um, I think I, I, one major question that Giants fans threw at me was, how does a guy with his physical skill set drop as far as he did in the draft? So tell me about Trey. Tell me why he didn't go necessarily higher than he did. Yeah. Um, the thing about Trey, he hasn't tapped into his full ability, his full potential. Um, and that's the that's the scary part. That's the part that, um, it's going to blow people away when he actually tap into that and um, become that that true professional corner, that true professional DB, that experienced DB. Um, he's going to blow some people away. Um, but, I mean, he's a tremendous athlete, as everyone could see. He's very intelligent. Um, and he came in like that. You know, obviously, there was some fine-tuning, you know, some things that, uh, he, he didn't know and, you know, he just needed to learn um, and, and to be consistent with and he bought into it. And, you know, this is this that's who he is, you know. So um, the the reason the the reason he fell, I guess, to the sixth round, uh, one, people could say, yeah, he played in the Sun Belt, you know, Conference right. USA and Sun Belt. So he didn't play against, you know, top talent at times. Um, but it, it wasn't necessarily that cause we had some, it was some really good receivers in the Sun Belt. We actually played some ACC teams, you know, so he got a chance to, to go up to, against some talent and put it on tape. You know, um, and I actually talked with Trey about this actually, I mean, yesterday, last night, um, the, the thing about it was he just didn't do, he, he didn't dominate consistently, you know, and that's what every every time we talk, I'm I'm in his ear, like keep your foot on the gas, man, keep dominating. Um, and that was the main thing. He just didn't dominate consistently against lesser opponents that should have been lesser opponents to him. Um, you know, and, and I think sometimes he just relaxed a little bit, and mm -hmm. and it, it just it was a little bit just an inexperience, you know. And I just had to keep pushing him a little bit, but you know that was a lesson that he had to learn. That was a lesson that he, he learned. And ultimately it, it cost him a couple rounds. I mean, I think he should have been at least a third rounder. Yeah. Um, you know, but he, he realized that now he realized that now. And I think he, that's what's been helping him you know, with the giants, with, with his play, um, being locked in and focused every, every down, you know, knowing that, um, that man across him can't beat him, you know, and, and, you know, being willing to dominate his opponent every play. You know? So I think it was just a little bit of just inexperience in, in playing um, at a high level and understanding that I need to dominate consistently because people are watching me. You know, yeah. and, and that was that was just something that, you know, we talked about a lot when when he was playing for me. But it, it sometimes it doesn't click until you know something like you get you don't get picked into the sixth round happens. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and then he now like, he's got like uh, a chip on his shoulder, right? Yeah. It's kind of like a wake up call, right? Yeah. Um, you know. it's it's interesting that you said that you talked to him last night. So I'm assuming obviously you're talking about his time with the Giants, how he's doing on the field. What has he told you about the Giants organization since he's shown up? Like the guys in the building, the locker room culture. Um, has he said anything about our DBs coach? Uh, 
the defensive coordinator, Wink Martindale. What has he told you about the Giants? You know, we really haven't gotten into any of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if he wanted to say anything about it, I'm sure he would. But I haven't questioned anything. Um, and I really, I, I mean, he's a professional. Uh, yeah. he's, uh, he has to handle himself like a professional. So I, I, I'll try to stay out of that um, because sometimes that can get a little blurry. So, of course, yeah. So I try to stay out of it, but we honestly we haven't we haven't touched any of those subjects about the the organization or his or the DB coach. Um, it's been about just him. It's been Trey versus Trey, you know. And that when when we talk, you know, that's kind of what we focus on. That's what I focus on with him, you know, just staying in his ear about competing with himself. You know, he. he He'll tell me some of the good stuff he did, tell me some of the bad stuff he did, you know, and I just try to bring it back full circle and um, just get him to see the big picture and get him to understand that he's where he should be, you know, mm -hmm. exactly where he should be. And as long as he continue to do what he's capable of doing, then, you know, the sky's the limit for him. Yeah, and I think he clearly projects best on the outside as a boundary corner due to all the physical attributes. At least I think that. Obviously, you know better than me. You coach the guy. But, uh, you know, with his long arms, his height, his speed, he's got everything that you want. It's just a matter of getting more experience uh, mm -hmm. at the NFL level. So I can't wait to see him grow as a New York Giant, and I think he's going to be successful. I think some fans got to pump the brakes a little bit. You don't want to set the expectations sky high. He's still rookie. Yeah. He's going to learn. Trial mm -hmm. by fire. And I don't know if you've looked at the Giants' schedule this year. We're going up. You name a top ten wide receiver. We're going. To, we're going up against them. So Absolutely. Trey's going to be put to the test this year. And I'm looking forward to seeing how he grows as a player because we got a really good young secondary. Obviously, we mm -hmm. drafted Deontay Banks. We got him. We drafted Cordell Flott um, last year in the third round, who's similar skill set in terms of his yeah, height. I'm his familiar speed. with Flott a little bit. Matt oh yeah, Lester. yeah. You met Flott before? Yeah, I'm familiar with him. Yeah. Cool, cool, very, very cool, very cool. What would you say? Well, you coached him when he got there. I, he went to junior college for two years before he went went to Old Dominion, right? Mm -hmm. He, yeah. When he got there, as a prospect, what would you say his biggest weakness was? Uh, you know, when he came in in his junior year, and how did he improve upon it? Mm, his biggest weakness. He just tried to do too much, you know, and um, sometimes he reverted back to that. Um, instead of being himself, being Trey, being the that long arm, big body, you know, guy that don't have to overexert himself to make a play. You know, sometimes he just, he got himself out of position um, by trying to do too much, and so that I think you know that was one of the things that he had to work on and, and not try to force play, not not try to force things. Um, try to force plays to happen, try to make those plays, let those plays come to him, you know, and, I, and sometimes that hurt him, that hurt him in some games too. Um, but I think that was the biggest thing that, you know, the biggest jump from his junior to senior year, uh, he just relaxed a little bit more, relaxed a little bit more, let some of the plays come to him, not worry about, you know, because ultimately, like his goal was to go to the NFL. I got to make plays. I got to yeah. make plays. I got to make plays. So you try to force those plays, try to force these things, and you mess around and you get beat. You know, especially get, playing but, at a at a school like Old Dominion, right? You have you like in the back of your head, you're like, I'm not playing at Miami, I'm not playing at mm -hmm. uh, Alabama. Like I really got to do something to try to stand out. So yeah, I, I get that. Yeah. It puts more pressure on yourself to try to make highlight plays. So it was just getting him to understand that. Look, man, you're gonna pass the eye test. Yeah. Like if somebody look at you, they're going to – you're going to that, get that, – that's, that's a prototypical corner, like <laughs> physically, from a physical skill set. That, that's what you, you want. Know, yeah, it's all about just being consistent. You know, so it, it took a little bit, um, but that was the biggest thing, you know, just trying to get them to settle down, play technique, be consistent, and just play ball, you know, have fun with it. You know, but it's hard. It's hard when, when you got – you know, you come in with a chip on your shoulder. You got, you feel like you got things to prove. You know, and he came into a room that was really young, so he came in as a, he basically came in as the leader. You know, and that was hard. That was hard as well. You know, because I put a lot on him. 
um, because I knew what he was capable of. And he was age wise, the older, the older guy in the room, you know, even though he, he still hadn't played like major college football, you know, when he came in. So, um, he had a lot on his plate when he first came in, you right. know, wanting to come in and, and start right away um, and be efficient, you know. All right. Well, um, oh, there you go. You dropped out for a second. You're back. You're back. Yeah, he just he just had a lot on his plate, wanting to come in right away and start and be efficient um, and make those plays so he can get to the league, you know, and then I'm putting some pressure on him to be a leader in the room as well, you mm -hmm. know, so um, – I think that that jump from junior to senior year uh, was major because he it, he started to settle in a little bit more and just got comfortable uh, being in the room and being being the guy the go to guy becoming a leader in a way yeah. right that that yeah that's what it sounds like so that's great I mean that's what the Giants are looking for you know that I think last year the Giants did a great job in terms of starting to clean up the locker room culture um, they have a motto it's called uh, uh, smart tough dependable that those are the types of players that they look for. And a lot of things that you're saying sounds like he's smart, tough, and dependable. So, um, which is going to bring me to my next question. What's his best trait? We talked about what his weakest trait was coming in from a physical standpoint. Obviously, we just talked about his leadership. What is his best trait that he displayed at the collegiate level while at Old Dominion? And do you think he'll have any issues adjusting to NFL game speed? And what will be his key to success in the league? His best trait physically? Or just yeah, physically, physically, yeah. Physically. Um it would have to be it would have to be his footwork. You no, know, I, I thought he for a guy his size, he had really good feet. Um, you know, to move and put himself in position to stay in front of guys. You know, there's some things he needed to work on, but I thought he, you know, he did a good job with his feet. It wasn't much that, you know, I had to clean up. It was, you know, just critiquing a, a couple of things and just we tried a couple of things just to see what fit him the best. Um, but obviously getting in front of guys and being able to stay in front of them to use your hands um, and start with your feet first. You know, and he did a good job at, you know, putting himself in position with his feet to to – you know, stay in front of guys when he was pressing. And then, um, obviously, when he's in, in, you know, the end of the route, at the top of the route, um, dropping his weight, you know, and being able to get out of those breaks. So, um, so I think his, his footwork, though, was something that ended up being his, his best attribute. Um, you know, and as far as, like, game speed, I mean, I think he could run with anybody. Yeah. You know, um, Maybe not Tyreek Hill. Yeah, that's a little. Bit, <laughs> yeah, that's a little. That's that speed a little different though. Yeah. Um. Although Jalen High is pretty damn fast, he's getting a lot of practice at camp. I mentioned. I, I mentioned him to try. I said, "Yeah, the dude can run, huh?" He was like, oh, "Boy, tell me about it." You know. <laughs> so I, yeah. you know, that was that was one thing that I said. If you can run with him, then you I mean, run you with should, anybody. You'll be fine. Yeah. You know, he's proven that he can he can at least he can defend him. You know, right. so um but I don't think game speed would be an issue for him. You know, he's a smart young man as far as um football IQ and he's gonna he's gonna be he's gonna get even smarter, you know, once he uh see a lot of things and, and really settle and become a veteran in the game. Um but you know, he's a smart young man, so I don't think the speed of the game is going to be too fast for him. Um, it may hit him in the face at first, but he'll catch up in a heartbeat. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, his footwork and, and the things that, you know, uh, he's he's been able to do with his feet to, to put himself in position to make plays has been his best attribute. That's a good attribute to have. I mean, for sure. Um, another thing I want to ask you, because I, I think it's important – um, to be able to have, especially as a rookie, because like I talked about earlier, he's going to be, if he gets opportunities, and I think he will this year, he's going to be put to the test going up against some of these mm -hmm. wide receivers. Well, you coached him at college when he would struggle. You talked about how he struggled, especially his first year there where he was trying to do too much. Right. And he kind of didn't let the game come to him. How would he respond in game? 
Like if, if he would make a play, like if, if a wide receiver would make a big play on him or he'd have a bad penalty, how would he respond? You know, would he be frustrated? How, how would he respond on the sideline? The thing about it, he he knew what he did wrong, you know, and he knew what to do to fix it. He knew how to fix it. Um, and the frustration was a, a good frustration. It wasn't, you know, a out of, I'm out of my game type of frustration. Right. It was, you know, a, a competitive frustration. Um, so it was a matter of, you know, just needing to hear that confirmation of, okay, this is what you did wrong. This is how we fix it. He already knew it. It was just confirming it, you know, um, and that way it allowed him, okay, this is what I need to do. I need, I, I know what I need to do. Let me go do it. Coach just confirmed it. Let me do it. Let me settle in and get the job done. You know, so, and, and that was the, the one thing about it. It didn't, you didn't have to overcoach him. You know, he just, because he was smart enough and he understood what, what was wrong. He understood when he did it right. He understood when he did it wrong, you know, and how to fix it. You know, and if he didn't understand something, he would ask. Right. That's so, good. I mean, all good things I'm hearing about him. Um, do you think he's ready? Because you got, as a fan, you ask yourself, do you think he's ready right year one out of the gate to get, st maybe not starters, but like valuable reps early on in the season as an NFL rookie? I don't think no rookie's ready for that. <laughs> Cornerback, and you know, because you're a DB's coach, and I want fans listening to realize this. I think the, the three toughest positions to transition to into the NFL are the, obviously the quarterback, tackle, and corner. Mm -hmm. Like, like I think a lot of fans of New York last year see Sauce Gardner with the Jets, and they're just like, look at what Sauce did. Deontay Banks is going to be a star. Mm -hmm. Trey Hawkins is going to – that's not the way it works. There is a bit of a transition. Yeah. Um, I think he, he'll he have his struggles, but I think he'll he'll have more success than – than, um, his struggles, you know, um, I think it's, it's going to be because of the success he's been having right now in training camp, his confidence level is going to be really high yeah. and that's going to help him. It's going to yeah. help him. And it's going to, it's really going to like, he's going to gain that experience a lot faster. Um, and he's just going to, he's going to be, I mean, he's already all in, but he's going to dive into it even more, you know, because his confidence is so high right now. And I think, I mean, he get that opportunity. I think he's going to sell because he's going to, he's not going to want to give it up. He's not going to want to go back to whatever it is before he got to the Giants, you know, where, where the day one of when he was on the squad, whatever position he was at, he's not going to want to go back there. You know, so, He's he's gonna do whatever it takes to to stay where he's at, you know, or or be that guy, you know. And I remember he he mentioned in an interview, um, I think when they went into rookie minicamp that he didn't want to just be you know the other corner, like the other drafted corner, you right. know. And I think he's 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 proven that you know with his play that that's not he 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 wasn't saying it to be you know in a negative way. He just wanted to make it known that he was going to make a name for himself. He's here to compete. You know, so, yeah. and I think he's going to continue to carry that and it, it's going to help him, you know, regardless of he played 10 snaps or, you know, 40 snaps. Hey, let me, uh, quick question. I was actually just thinking about this as you were talking because obviously I think there's at least a strong chance they're going to ask him to contribute to special teams early on in his career. Mm -hmm. Did he have any experience at Old Dominion playing uh, in terms of punt coverage, kick coverage? Um, did he play any special teams while he was at Old Dominion? Yeah, we made him play special teams. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, yeah. obviously, like we we had a there's a great group of uh, coaches there, and they understood they understand the dynamics of you know the NFL and being scouted and everything. And you know, coming in as a rookie, most likely you're going to play special teams, so you need to get some of that on on tape. You know, so. You know, we we made sure those guys played special teams, and he wanted to play special teams because he knew that. I mean, he would be a guy that was probably going to have to play special teams, especially at corner. You're going to be yeah. a jammer or a gunner, right? You know, he's probably going to run down on kickoff. You know, so um, he did have to play special teams, not as much as I wanted him to because we were very thin at corner, right. and I couldn't afford to get him hurt um, or tire him out. But 
um, he did get an opportunity to play some, you know, and he, he should have blocked some punts. <laughs> He yeah. really should have blocked some punts. I don't know if they'll throw him in there and let him try to block some punts, but he had an opportunity to block some punts, and um, it didn't happen. But he 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 loves special teams, just didn't get a chance to play it enough. And how many teams showed up to Old Dominion to scout him? Just at like NFL teams, out of curiosity, were there? I obviously yeah, during your pro day, I'm sure some teams showed up. Yeah. Because um, you guys had a record number this year. You had three players drafted from Old Dominion, which I I, yeah. I, think, I think going into this year, I think there was only six or seven. Uh, I could be wrong. I know Zimenez went to Old Dominion, and he mm-hmm. was – I think he was your highest drafted player at the time, if I recall, when we drafted mm-hmm. him in the third round. Um, mm-hmm. But, you, yeah, you guys had three guys this year. Uh, get drafted. Yeah. 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 I think it was – I mean, at least 25 scouts, 25 teams came out to Pro Day. Wow. Uh, you know, we had teams all – coming in and out of practice, you know, watching film. Um, because we had those, we had some guys that you know, were capable of being drafted. Um, you know, and they got some guys coming up, you know, some younger guys coming up that um, may get drafted as well. So, so um, yeah, it was, a, it was a really good turnout, especially from year, I guess, year one to year three. Um, was really, really neat to see how things tra- started to turn. You know, those guys started developing and producing. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you think Hawkins is going to be, maybe like most rookies, it's going to take a little time to get going. But you think long term, Hawkins projects to be a starter for the New York Giants at the cornerback position? Yeah, yeah. I got my, I got my money on him. That's my guy. <laughs> you know, um... Let me, let me ask you. Speaking about your guy. It's a Giants channel. I have to ask you, being that you went to Duke, what do you think of Daniel Jones? Hey, I mean, I didn't really – I think I got a chance to meet him one time because I've been coaching, but um, everything I, I've i seen of him has been great. Uh, everything I've heard has been great. Um, under, obviously, he's an unbelievable player. You know, I know he broke some records at Duke. I mean, he's a Dukey, so – I got no choice but to be a fan of him. But um, no, I'm I'm, look, I'm actually looking forward to watching him more. So I, obviously, being in coaching, I didn't get a chance to watch much college football just as a fan. Um, but now I'm I'm, I'm actually getting I'm, I'm excited to get a chance to watch him. You know, perform. I've heard great things, and you know, so it's it's gonna be exciting to see him. Yeah, I can't wait for the year to start. I can't wait to see Trey in a Giants uniform, but. I just want to say thank you for coming on, taking 20, 25 minutes out of your night. Um, you know, I had a blast. I had a blast talking to you. Talk to Trey if he ever wants to come on the channel. I'm kidding. You don't got a person for that. But, no, I appreciate I appreciate you coming on, Leon, and, um, you know, and talking about Trey because I know a lot of Giants fans are excited about him. And to get any insight from a guy uh, that coached him at the collegiate level uh, means a lot to all of us. So thank you for coming on and, uh, and, and talking. Yeah, it was my pleasure. It was my pleasure, man. He's a great young man, and, you know, anytime I – get a chance to speak highly of him, I would definitely do so. I appreciate it, man. You have a good night, Leon. Thank you so much for coming on the channel. No problem. Thank you.